I think in the case of metadata, we've got a significant evidentiary problem here, and that is, does metadata, does uh, at least the uh, collection of metadata on all Australians, is that something that's actually going to achieve the kind of results that law enforcement agencies want? Um, and the experience is pretty clear. Um, we've had law mandatory data retention regimes in place in many countries in Europe. Uh, and recently, countries like Denmark and Germany have decided, well, although we've had these in place for a number of years, we've decided on the evidence that they haven't actually helped us. They haven't helped us pursue the people that we need to be able to pursue. And these powers haven't actually yielded the kinds of results that we would like them to yield. So I think in Australia, we need to ask ourselves the question, is a mandatory data retention regime something that we want? And if it is, then in what way are we going to implement it that's going to be different from how it's been implemented in countries like Denmark and Germany, and how is that going to get us some different results? Now, Simon, we probably wouldn't know uh, that much about this whole uh, metadata retention uh, if it weren't for Edward Snowden and his whistleblowing in the United States. Something interesting happened uh, when he first... Uh, when this first became public. Uh, most Americans considered him to be a traitor. Um, over a period of time, public opinion changed on Edward Snowden. Um, did it change as far as you were concerned? Well, I think Americans understood the importance of uh, the, the system that was in place and, and how extensive this regime was. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big difference between surveilling particular people who are suspected of wrongdoing and surveilling the entire population. And I think that the way that we want to move is to give law enforcement agencies the kind of powers that are going to allow them to go after people who are suspects, criminal suspects, but allowing for the kind of surveillance that we've seen in the United States is certainly not the direction that I'd like Australia to move in. So very briefly, do you regard Snowden as a villain or a hero? Uh, well, I, I, think it's, I think that dichotomy is not all that helpful, but I certainly think that it was important that he did what he did so that Americans were able to understand the extent of surveillance. Jen Robertson. Well, of course, given WikiLeaks' involvement in the Snowden case and the, the massive public interest in the disclosures that he, that Snowden uh, released, we wouldn't know the extent of these surveillance pro programs, not just in the US, but also in, here in Australia and the participation of the Australian government in Five Eyes. We know because of Edward Snowden that metadata... Um, this has sparked an entire review of the way in which NSA collects data. We know as a result of White House reviews and the Privacy Oversights Board in the United States that metadata has not made them more safe and, in fact, existing court orders would have been sufficient to achieve the outcomes that they were seeking. So if because of this, because of Snowden, we know this. And the question about whether we should have our authorities be proved that this foils terrorist attacks, we now know that it doesn't. And the question is, when you're going to invade people's privacy in the way that metadata does, and I don't think that the Australian public and the debate around this has adequately highlighted the extent to which metadata does invade your privacy. Well, how does it? Because there's been a tremendous debate around uh, in this country and no one seems to be able to explain whether it does or whether it doesn't, whether it tracks your internet surfing or whether it does not has been a huge matter for debate. No one's really given a concrete answer. Do you know? Well, of course, metadata is not defined and it's sort of defined often by reference to uh, what is not content. But as the head of the NSA has said, if you've got metadata, we actually don't need content because we can tell so much about you because of the metadata that we can collect. It involves all telecommunications information that is exchanged from, from the technology that you've given. Now, that can... Stanford University has shown that that can show a, a huge amount of information about us, our sexual preferences, um, our, our health, our health status, um, who we interact with, who our friends are, our political views. So do you want the government to know that you had a, an appointment with your gynaecologist, you then had a call from the gynaecologist, you then rang up and made an appointment with the abortion clinic. Do you want the government to know that? That is what they can tell from metadata. So if the government is going to be collecting metadata, that is a breach of our privacy. They have to justify that. They have to show that it is necessary and proportionate to the invasion of our privacy. Metadata, as we've just heard, doesn't achieve the ends that they seek. There are other ways, and they have existing powers to do this. It's not as if they can't investigate criminal suspects.